150 Reasons Universal Salvation is the Gospel, number 41, Extended Version. The New Testament exhibits Christ as a universal and complete Savior. He is there represented as the true light that lightest every man that cometh into the world, and the bread of God that cometh down from heaven to give light to the world, the physician to heal the morally diseased, the author and finisher of faith, captain of salvation, the Jesus or Savior who should save his people from their sins, the deliverer who should turn away ungodliness from Jacob, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, head of every man, head of the church, which is the body and the fullness of him that filleth all in all, the heir of all things, the faithful and true witness, the prevailing lion of the tribe of Judah, the door and shepherd of the sheep who gave his life for the sheep, the mediator and testator of the better covenant, in short, as the complete savior of the world. Now if Christ be the true light that lightest every man that cometh into the world, shall not every man be enlightened? If the bread of God giveth life to the world, shall not the world have life? If the morally sick are healed, shall they eternally remain diseased? Shall not faith in the now unbelieving be perfected under such an author and finisher as Christ? And salvation be completed under such a captain of whom it is said, he shall not fail or be discouraged? If he saves his people from their sins, shall they eternally remain unsaved? If he turns away ungodliness from Jacob and takes away the sin of the world, shall ungodliness and sin forever hold mankind in endless bondage? Shall the body of Christ eternally remain incomplete or diseased or in bondage? Shall the heir of all things never possess his inheritance? Did the faithful and true witness swear falsely when he declared, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw or drag all men unto me? Shall the lion of the tribe of Judah be defeated and never prevail? Shall the sheep never enter the door opened for them, nor the shepherd that died for them lead them into green pastures, and by the side of the still waters of God's love? Shall the mediator never accomplish the object of his mission? nor see the better covenant fulfilled, nor witness the conferring of the inheritance of those to whom it was bequeathed and attested by his death. In short, if he be the savior of the world, shall not the world be saved? Can he be, in truth, styled the savior of the world, if a large portion of the world be eternally lost? From all these and numerous other descriptions of his advent, character, and the object of his mission, what else can be inferred but that he came for the purpose of effecting the salvation of all men, and was purposely represented as the universal Savior, both in the Old and New Testaments? Can all these representations possibly accord with the idea of his being only a partial Savior or deliverer of mankind? Surely not. Moreover, the character of Christ as exhibited in his life labors and teaching while on earth can never accord with the doctrine of endless misery nor with any other than that of the salvation of all men taste and see that the lord is good